All right. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Sandra Castellino. I am uh, what they call a market leader at SolarWinds. Basically, I work on the go-to-market side of the business. Um, I used to be an engineer, but now I play one in marketing. Um, and so I am going to talk uh, a little bit about free tools and uh, what we're doing with free tools, because uh, as you guys know, free tools have been part of SolarWinds strategy for uh, a long time, right? Almost from the beginning. Um, it was a great way for us to, uh, to get to know uh, IT users, a great way for uh, IT users to get to know SolarWinds. But over the years, um, you know, free is, because it's successful, uh, everyone's doing it, right? So there's uh, lots of free utilities out there. There's lots of, uh, you know, scaled down versions of, of paid software that are free. Um, and so about a year ago, uh, we took a look at the free tool strategy and said, you know, uh, how, how can we make this better? How can we add more value uh, into what we're doing with free tools? And, you know, we've had millions of people people download uh, the existing free tools. And so we really want uh, to make a shift and see, uh, you know, how can we get uh, free tools to be used by every IT organization out there, right? How can we provide value not just to individual users, but to organizations, uh, organizations themselves? And so we've sort of taken a shift in the free tool strategy and gone from tools. Or I think most of you have seen, you know, most of the free tools we have today are uh, relatively narrow uh, utilities. They solve very specific problems. TFTP server obviously is one of the best known. And so we wanted to shift from there to what we've sort of called free products. And so um, other than that being just a different word, the, the, the real difference between that is that free products are uh, actually ongoing things that we will uh, continue to develop. Uh, they will have a much broader um, uh, set of capabilities, and really we've targeted uh, a problem that is is much bigger than uh, a small utility could solve, and, and frankly, a problem that w we had people say that they would pay to solve. Um, and so uh, that's the shift. the The first free tool, um, the first free product, I'm sorry that that we have uh, announced, and we just released it in March, is called Alert Central. Um, uh, and I think some of you have probably played with it and, <coughs> and seen it, but, but Alert Central is focused around uh, solving the problem around distribution and uh, escalation of alerts, right? And the problem that if you're an IT organization, most people solve with, you know, calendars, ex uh, either in Excel or Google or wherever, and passing pages around. Um, and that's still the way many people solve it. And so we thought that, uh, you know, had to be a better way to solve uh, you know, distribution of alert problem. And so we built Alert Central that will actually take alerts from any system that generates them. And that's, that's important to us as well. We didn't want it to be a SolarWinds-centric uh, solution that only took alerts from, from our products, but that took alerts from VMware and Microsoft System Center and CA and HP and Splunk and anything that, you can, that generates an alert and then allows you to put in, you know, the entire IT team allows them to manage their calendars, who's on call, who's not on call, uh, where, how alerts get routed, uh, to which teams, how's escalation work, um, and so really build that into one product. And so that's what we've done with uh, Alert Central. Um, if you haven't checked it out, it's uh, swalertcentral.com, um, and you can find it right there. Um, and like I said, the, the thing with Alert Central that's going to be very different is that it's a product that we'll continue to, to develop, right? And so uh, the version one shipped uh, at the beginning of March. Um, there's a product manager on Chris's team. There's a dev team behind it. And so it's going to continue to move forward. And like all the SolarWinds products, and Danny talked about the community, will continue to move forward based on the feedback that all the people that are using the product give us, right? Um, and so that's, that's what's going to drive the features that we add. Uh, that's what's going to drive when we release things. Uh, and, uh, and so if you're using it uh, and you have feedback, uh, Thwack is a great pl place to give that feedback. And uh, the product managers will, uh, like Danny said, uh, read all of that, interact with you guys on, on Alert Central. But what we're hoping is that all IT organizations can make use of it and uh, really fills a, a problem that yeah, you know, while some people are willing to pay for is is probably annoying for a lot of people. Let me uh, actually ask a question there. Um, 
So I'm not the one that administrates our solar wind installation, but uh, the feedback <coughs> I'm getting from our our uh, monitoring team uh, is that a lot of people with recent changes to NCM have said that they really miss the fat client. You know, <coughs> they really, that, that's a feature they love, and they've wanted to roll back, you know, from seven back to six. I, what are you, what are you guys doing to address that? You know, I'm gonna let uh, Chris talk about that. Okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't hope to introduce myself in answering that question, but uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. My name is, I'm sorry. My name is Chris Lapointe, so I, I run the product management team that. working for Denny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. So, no pressure. Uh, so with NCM, you know, there definitely is a move to move more and more features to the web console, and I think that's just a general trend because on the other side of the equation, we have we certainly have people that love basically no change, right? Give me what I was using before and don't change that. Mm -hmm. you know, you'd have to pry it from my cold dead hands. And Not so, storage guys. Yeah, exactly. And so, so we definitely have that set of customers. And we have other customers, and this has tended to be the majority of customers that at least we've talked to, have been struggling with the fact that they have to remote desktop into the Win32 uh, experience in order to actually access a lot of the features. Um, so I think one of the areas where they may be having some regret in terms of how we've implemented some things on the website is we, we may have not implemented, especially I think for some of the early iterations, in a, in a manner that delivers the functionality in the way that they expect. And so they want it to be as fast as the Win32 console. And so we've definitely taken a lot of that feedback. And I think as we've added more and more functions, I think we've gotten a lot better at taking incorporating that feedback and making it so that it is as transparent as possible. There will always be, you know, better things um, or, or better experiences that you can create within a Win32 console than you can within the web. But I think those are certainly getting smaller and smaller as HTML5 and different technologies are coming to fruition. So I think that, so I think that we'll address hopefully a lot of the, you know, the clients that you talk to, some of their concerns in that move. Um, but that definitely is the future. And so yeah. we'll have the Win32 console. We're not going to, you know take it away from them immediately um, and say, here's the web and that's your only option, but we're going to provide more and more stuff within the web and that's just kind of our long-term direction. Yeah, I understand why you guys did it. I mean, you're consolidating the databases and going to more of a unified, you know, everything under Orion type thing. Right. And uh, it makes sense. It's just, you know, obviously you're looking to implement features to address concerns and that, that makes me feel happy, so. Right, right. And, there, and there's, there's, a, you know, I don't, I don't, for those of you who don't know, uh, NCM, our network configuration management product, it started as a Win32 desktop console, then sort of grew out from there. We added the web-based interface, trying to integrate it more with the Orion, um, you know, interface so that you can, as you're troubleshooting a network issue and you're trying to figure out, okay, it was working yesterday, what changed, you can have that information sort of right there in the same place. Um, and so that's sort of been the driving thing. There are tons of features within that Win32 console because it's been around for you know, six or seven years. And so migrating all that will take some time. And so our intent is to definitely keep that Win32 console around as long as there still are features that, are, that people are still using that console. And until we're able to replicate that same functionality in the web console in a way that our users can actually use and, and consume. OK. All right. Cool. Um, so, uh, so like I said, um, get back to, to free tools for a second. Um, you know, I think uh, we're hoping with the with the move to a free product strategy, um, we sort of uh, start to give folks on the IT side more value out of uh, free products that they can use. Uh, you know, in, in production, they're not just utilities; they benefit the whole IT team. Um, and and we're looking forward to really building community around Alert Central um, uh, and, and having folks, uh, you know, use the product, leverage it, give us feedback, um, and, and we'll, uh, we'll keep moving that ball forward. Do you find that the users of the free products are more demanding than the users of your paid products? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know that they are. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't say they are. Um, I, I, you know, part of it, we'll see the experience, right? I think because the <laughs> tools are, are pretty narrow in scope and they you know, yeah. that single function, people tend not to be all that demanding. But, you know, with Alert Central and it being a, a, a full sort of product, um, I don't expect that they'll be any more or less demanding than they would for a product that they paid for. Um, and, and, you know, we, we hope they're not, right? We hope that they, you know, really 
uh, give us the feedback that uh, allows us to build a, a truly great product that they would use in place of paying for something because there are obviously paid alternatives and, and you know, our, our hope is that we get to know more folks uh, who are IT practitioners and more in more IT organizations by actually building a product that, uh, that delivers more value. Uh, the only reason I asked that, I've talked to some other developers of software schools who said that when they went free or cheap, people would just inundate them with crap. They're like, I paid 99 cents for this, and I, I mean, seriously. <laughs> and, but when they raised their price, they got fewer complaints. That's why I was... <laughs> um, yeah. Fewer users, yeah. Well, I don't know if it was fewer users, but it was, I think that there was more perceived value. I, I would imagine if you had a million people that would, would just click the button, I got it, and you made it a dollar, 10% of them will pay the dollar. Yeah. And just rules of scale apply. Yeah, but I laugh price. because I agree with you. Oftentimes you feel entitled. Yeah. There was actually a survey like that about, about um, iPhone apps. Yeah. I think that much. Yeah, and, and they did it. And from, from 99 cents to zero, there's a jump, and when the guy went back up, everybody fled back to 99 cents. <laughs> so I think uh, one cent is the actual breaking point. Yeah. So once you go vote, pay. Something that might tie into that is that you know, if you spend a lot of money on something, you might assume that the people who made it put a lot of thought behind it, yeah. and maybe you're wrong and not, not them, as opposed to a free product, well, you know, this I know what I want, you need to fix it right now or I'm not going to buy another free copy. I, I think it's just the, <laughs> I can't think of a word I can use in mixed company attraction factor. Yeah. That, you know, the, 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 <laughs> your speech was Sure. Powerless. Yes. Power is without words. That's like twice in the time I've known you. Wow. <laughs> yes. So Do you need some sugar? Yes. <laughs> so to, to Having to, to go to Yiddish, <laughs> the putzen are attracted to mm -hmm. free. <laughs> At any rate. So, all right, well, uh, I'm going to move on and let, uh, let the guys with the demos talk. Putzen.